Steve Mandel, and myself and Noel O'Carroll, who's the Excavations Director uh, at the Black Friary, are going to do a, a brief talk and uh, a show and tell, and hope to get some input from you guys on what we're doing and where we're going. So I'm going to talk a little bit about community archaeology and public archaeology and, and what it is, what, what's it means to you, because we're learning this as well. And we, Myself and Finn come from a, 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 a from firstly an academic archaeologist background and then into commercial archaeology and, and back into education and community archaeology is, is a new concept to us as well. So that's the part that I want to talk about. And we want to stand up here too. Uh, just in terms of credits, uh, I'm speaking to you about the work of uh, Dr. Mary Kelly, Caroline Henry, who's here this evening, and Barbara Malley, uh, and a heritage survey that we undertook uh, in the town, and it's actually part of a process that's still ongoing. And um, I've meant to delete those because I want to thank these people afterwards. So, and I did talk about this. So, what's community archaeology? There are many definitions uh, from uh, an archaeological site that's actually excavated by a local community to an archaeological site that's in the ownership of the community that, where they bring specialist archaeologists in to come and excavate to uh, projects that are collaboration between academics or government bodies and the local community uh, with the aim of the local community having a greater appreciation of their archaeology. Um, and where does the Black Friary fit into this? I guess the Black Friary was, was set up as a, as a research and training excavation. It's, uh, can, it's council land, uh, and we were invited onto the land uh, because the site was at risk, the site was underutilized, and it was a, a perfect venue for what we were doing at the time, uh, which was uh, running field schools, which were training education centres for students uh, from Ireland and from overseas. So that was our initial purpose, was to come and carry out a research excavation on the site. But we also saw this as a potential uh, as a community archaeology project and what we've been working really hard to try and do is to involve the local community to, to, to really engage the local community in what's going on on the site, not just in terms of, like you see here, uh, a visit to the site to actually be involved in the process. Um, so we've been trying to achieve this over the last few years and, and it's something that's ongoing. Uh, and just to see how we were doing um, with funding from Loretta Guinan, uh, Dr. Loretta Guinan, the heritage officer for Meath County Council, we, we've been undertaking a heritage survey to gauge the level of awareness of the site itself and then what we're doing on the site which is uh, the Irish Archaeology Field School. And I'm just going to go through some of the, some of the results. The, basically, the survey was undertaken um, by students from UCD, from Heritage Management, and they set themselves up here over a number of days, uh, surveying. I don't know whether any of you were surveyed. Were any of you surveyed? Um, and they were asked a series of questions about the site, and about the archaeology field school, whether they knew about the site. So very, it's a very simple, um, this is the first phase of the, pro the process. And you can see roughly half the people surveyed were aware of the site. That doesn't mean anything other than they'd heard of the Black Friary. They might have known anything else about it, but they'd heard of the Black Friary. And how did you first hear about it? And uh, why local knowledge is, is, is the largest, but um, a, a wide range of reasons from just people telling them out of passing by, hearing about it from the work we've been doing on the newspaper and the radio, uh, a small but, but reasonable percentage of people. <coughs> and then, if they knew about the site, well, not if they knew about the site, but what did the site, did, did they have any interaction with the site? Had they been to the site? So the vast majority of people like three quarters of people had no interaction with the site. They may have known about it, but they had no interaction with it. Down to 3% actually uh, knowing people who work on the site. So interesting but not surprising results in the number of people who were aware of what was going on on the site. Now I suppose a slimmer question but slightly different is, do, were you aware of the archaeology field school? 
And uh, what was interesting is, well, not, not surprising again, uh, much less people, only a quarter of people had actually heard of the field school. Interestingly enough, the, it was questioned, was, had you heard of the Ar Irish Archaeology Field School? People would say, no, but you know, there's, there's archaeologists excavating over there. So it, it's, it's, they hadn't associated the Irish Archaeology Field School with Blackfriars site, but they may have known it was archaeology. Over there. And a similar question, how do people know about it? And word of mouth was the, the number one reason for people knowing about it. This is one of the things we, that was of, we went, oh dear. <laughs> we have a community archaeology project here, and 80% of the people surveyed had no interaction with the field school at all. So they may have been on the site. A lot of people walk their dogs on the site, a lot of people have other use of the site, but very few people were interacting with us, um, certainly in the survey thing. So we set about, that was, as I said, that was the first bit. That was undertaken at the start of the summer. And since the summer, we've been working very hard to try to increase awareness of the site. And I'm delighted because I was, Caroline and myself drove over here together. I said, gosh, what if only one person shows up? But there is an awareness. People are aware of the site. And, and it's good to see that this is increasing. Um, so we have the Black Friday Committee. There's a, a few members of the committee here tonight, which is great. And uh, these are local people and uh, from county council members to uh, tourism providers to people who have an interest in what we're doing and, and want to help us. And we meet relatively regularly to discuss aspects of the site and what we're doing. We had the site launch on the 8th of June, very well attended. Um, we had a community open day in July, and that was a really, really nice event. Uh, we had tours all day in Europe. We Again, with funding from the Rector Gain and the Hair Shops, we've been very supportive of the project. We visited all of the primary schools and spent a day in each of the primary schools and, and talked to them about archaeology. Try to engage them in archaeology, not just the Blackfriars, but they live in such a wonderful area, so rich in archaeology. Try to engage them, and then we've had visits from schools onto the site as well. We ran a kids' summer camp for two weeks during the summer, and all of those kids came and visited the site. Uh, so slowly but surely, from the, the primary school children upwards were, were getting involved um, and we're working now with transition year schools in uh, transition year girls in school work uh, who are helping us to backfill the site for the winter. We have the public lecture series and we've had this lecture uh, and then now what will happen over the next month or so is we're going to start putting up signage, interpreted signage. So people visiting the site will, we don't have to be there, there'll be things there to say this is what's going on and, and of course it's a work in progress. So this is the bit I want to, I want to thank the resident, she's been wonderful, the people of Trim and the, the wider community for participating in the survey, the survey students who undertook the survey for us, uh, our supervisors on site who have been really, really, you know, we'll have students who are coming over and they're paying to come over and excavate on the site. And you might think, oh gosh, we're using them to give tours of the site for, but actually they really enjoy that experience. It's, it's part of, if, if people want to become an archaeologist, this is one of the skills they need to learn is how to communicate to archaeology. Uh, and of course the Blackfriars Committee. So finally, before I hand it over to Finn for the interesting stuff about the actual site. While you're sitting listening to Finn, we would like your input afterwards. Have a think about, do you think what we're doing is working in terms of community archaeology? Um, I suppose one of the more unique aspects of, our, of the community archaeology project at the Blackfriary is that archaeology um, really intact, uh, very serious archaeology uh, incorporates about half of the site where, where uh, the remainder of the site may have been used for open pasture, there may be archaeology on it, but the idea is that this site will be a, use, a site that's used by the community. Yes, the archaeology will be exposed, recorded, preserved, but the ultimate aim and the community aspect of it is that this field is used by the community for the uses the community want to use it for. So. As you're listening to Finn, it would be nice if you have a think about what you think we could do to improve that, because we really want to welcome the engagement of, the whole, the, of, of everybody in helping us with this project. So, thanks very much. I'll just hand you over to Finn.